So you want to learn to program in Stationeers? Maybe your own custom cooling solution? Or heating? Maybe you want to make a fuel mixer? Or a super fast custom airlock with four sides? Maybe you just want to be safe from overfilling canisters? No matter their size. Maybe you just want to automate the lights. Or the arc furnace should just continue smelting whatever's next in its input stack. Even a failsafe deadman switch is possible. Whatever it may be, Stationeer's assembly has you covered. But how do you even start? Probably gonna need some microchips, huh? And a place to run them. Even if it's not dedicated to run a chip. Well, we definitely need to make one. So we need gold, steel, electrum, and solder. So you need gold, iron and coal, gold and silver, and iron and lead. Creating those alloys seems like a daunting task, but you have to learn how to operate the furnace. It's best to first make the electrum, because your furnace may still be empty and afterwards you can make the solder right away. There we go, already done. Then toss in the lead and iron, because the furnace is now rather cold, so we are close to the rather low temperatures that uh, solder needs. If you want to accelerate this a bit, you can just toss in some more ice. And then there's of course steel, for which you need more heat. Coal and iron in the right mixture, of course. Keep your pressure under control. Making the gold is of course the easiest part. Then you fire up your electronics printer. Could even be the simple one, not the advanced one. Toss in the materials. And start printing your chip. You should also make an IC housing for good measure. Then you place down the housing. You cable it up. Place the chip. And then what? And then you ask for help. That's what you need. Well, a computer is needed. A motherboard also. And once you've built the thing and cabled it up and turned it on, you can actually start programming the thing. Eventually. Oh, here we go. Should we program some solar panels? No, let's start with something easy, easy first. Some lights, maybe. There, all set. Okay, so now that we have a simple program, uh, let's write it to the chip. And, um, and, and, uh, what, what's going on? Unrecognized instruction at line 2. Dude! Well, the computer of course has its own language and not only that, but also you have to be very specific. You can't just say, well, it's something with the lights. You have to know exactly what you want so that you can translate it to the computer. So what do we want? For starters, let's just make the thing turn the lights on. There are three ways of addressing a device. To, to tell a device to do what it's supposed to do, you need to address it. Hey Charles, hey Richard and so forth. Oh, maybe we should give these things names. 
there. So every item in the world that's built has its own unique identity number. If I deconstruct the slide and put it up again, it will have a new identity number because it's a new thing. Anyway, I can address them directly by identity number. I can also address them by using these screws here, which is what we're going to do. I can also address them by the combination of type and name. I can say every light of this type on this cable network shall be addressed and only if it's called Charles or Richard or whatever this is. Well, let's select then the red light here for this screw and keep clicking until we see it. Ah, here we go, red light, yellow light. And the green one. Well, there's no way around hard learning now, so S and every command that starts with an S is for writing a value, like saving. And L uh, commands are for loading. Uh, the computer always wants to know where to save something or where to load something. Let's write into D0 logic type. What is that? Yeah, it's actually simple. Let's go to the kit lights, scroll down and see the right light type and then which logic values it has. Oh, we can just turn this thing on. Like so. Export. Uh, hmm. Hmm, this worked. If I want this to run endlessly, I can just say jump to a certain location. That location can just be a number, the line number, but that's risky. We can give them names by placing a label here, and so in this way it is safe, even if I move the source code around. Export. Ah, now it's kind of insistent, isn't it? You should always have a yield statement at the beginning of your loop, because, uh, well, it's complicated to explain to a beginner, but let's just say uh, the game will force your program to pause sometimes, and this tells, this is you telling the game, hey, I'm willing to pause in this place, so uh, let's do that right now. And then the game will not force another pause. That's the short version. Hmm, what might this program do? One, 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 hmm, let's test it out then. Oh! Disco! That shall be all for now.